Hey there, welcome back for what is likely to be the final part of Threat Gen Red vs. Blue. Before we hop back into our blue team campaign and try and get ourselves a W here for a change, uh, I did notice a couple things I did want to show you. Um, first of all, um, we go to About Red vs. Blue here. Uh, we can see um, we got... I, I noticed something here. So, uh, first of all, um da -da 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 -da, executive producer game designers and so on um come down here we can see there was a couple of where are they i just had them there we go creative and technical consultants chad hunter and pascal ackerman were the technical consultants on this and we have some special thanks here we can see some involvement here regarding the uh, localization from the uh, from the uh nagoya institute of technology uh, Chad Hunter, Dr. Art Conklin, the University of Houston, Seth Jaffe, Isaiah Jones, Houston Security Conference, Sam Van Ryder, Michael Farnham, um, I'm guessing um, a relative of uh, uh, the developer, Clint, uh, Ashley, uh, Jeff Whitney, Mike Lennon, and so on, uh, Security Week. I uh, just wanted to say, when I saw this, <laughs> Elite Hacker Elite, DC 713 and DC 281. Um, anyway, I, I just saw this here <clears throat> and, uh, I, uh, I thought to myself, wow, no wonder this game is so good. Uh, looks like there was some involvement from cybersecurity professionals in its development. Um, so I checked out the, um, manual that comes along with it. Uh, and, uh, I can, I saw this section here by the community for the community. Every single member of the development team for this game actually comes from the cybersecurity or infosec community. Most of us work or have worked for years in cyber, as cybersecurity professionals, and we all remain active members of the community. Developers, Clint, uh, again, I'm sorry if I'm uh, massacring your name here, uh, but Boudignon and Aaron Sheeb, Shabib are authors of the book Hacking Exposed Industrial Control Systems, which explains the focus of the game on industrial control systems. Uh, Threat Gen Red vs. Blue was developed and tested as a result of the feedback from more than 300 beta testers in the cybersecurity community. Our goal is to continue to make regular updates based upon continued feedback, making this truly a game by the community for the community. And it shows. Uh, everything I've seen about this game so far has had a sort of uh, um, eerie verisimilitude to it. And that explains why. So um, all I got to say is uh, congratulations to the team. Thanks very much for developing the game, for continuing to update it, uh, because it is certainly one of the, the most faithful um, cybersecurity games that I have ever seen. Definitely one of the most real, real, uh, true to life, I guess, in certain respects. Um, but uh, a good one, a definite good one. This is going on my my top five uh, best um cybersecurity related or hacking simulator related games I've ever played. Um, I did also notice uh, that there's game settings for changing your starting cache and your staff and so on. Uh, you can have infinite horizon games, it seems. Um, and, and so on. I'm not going to mess with these. I'm going to leave it as their default settings, but it is good to know that those are in there um, because I've been complaining a lot about it. <laughs> so, all right. We're going to do it this time, God damn it! regardless, hell or high water, we're going to do it. We're going to go back to our manufacturing plant. We've already tried the other ones, and manufacturing plant just seemed, just seems like the simplest scenario, so. All right, we're into it. It's too loud. The damn music is too damn high. All right. Uh, we're got a three people. We got our fifty thousand dollars. We will begin as we always do with our gateway. That is still too. What the hell, man? There we go. All right. Uh, so we'll begin with that. Uh, we'll get two of our people on the uh, policies and procedures as soon as possible, and we will get uh, our last person on asset inventory as we did before. Ties us up quite a bit at the beginning of the game, but it is. Um. It is worth it. Yeah, the smaller scenario here with the manufacturing plant um, is just much simpler. All right, so we're done with those. We got all that. Um, let's be, let's see, what should our next move here be? Let's request budget right away. Let's see if we can accumulate several million dollars in budget. Um, 
Uh, it's easier with the tree. Okay. Okay. Um, let's get... Um, let's get the security awareness training up quickly. And let's get strong Wi-Fi up right away here on the DMZ. Alright, strong Wi-Fi is done. Let's get network level security up right away. Or, sorry, network level encryption up right away. Okay. Okay, our training is done. Let's put them on two-factor right away as well. Okay, and let's start moving into uh, vulnerability mapping. Oh, sorry, end turn, I forgot. It doesn't automatically know what I want it to do. And let another turn pass. We can get some of our people freed up. And authentication is done. Good, 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 good. Uh, let's move into the segmented network right away. And let's also move into um, video surveillance right away. And my people are tied up, so I can't start doing anything else just yet. And there's still no people, so we're going to keep on keeping on here in round 10. Still no people. We got them tied up into the big dogs here, so. Okay, now we got our people back. Uh, let's start. Doing our... Hatching. Well, hold on a sec before we start moving into that. Let's see. We, we could use the IR procedures. Um, uh, let's put our people... Let's uh, put our people into vulnerability assessments and a seam. And then we'll do um, the uh, IR. Um, create IR procedures. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, we need another turn or two. Okay, we got PLC out of service. Where? Are oh, shit. Uh, yeah, reboot that. Uh, and let's start. Let's start doing some stuff here. Yeah, change those default credentials. Start cleaning up a mess a little bit here. Yeah, so good vulnerability mitigated. Okay. Yep, change those default creds. Install AV. Um, we could start moving the needle up here a little bit on our threat intel. Let's do system hardening though first. Ah, fuck. Damaged ICS process. The spear phishing campaign. I should have, I guess, done a little bit more into that tree, I guess. Winning is hard as the blue team. In this game, as in real life. Alright, here we go again. Still wouldn't spend that uh, time anywhere else. I gotta be honest with you. Um, maybe we can defer process and procedures. Hold on. That's how we get two-factor for some reason. Um, yeah, I feel like that's really still um, our best our best get here. Um, and Sh shit, let's do a video surveillance right away then, I guess. I'm mixing it up a little bit, but honestly, I wouldn't change much about my moves. 
the firewall up. People are still busy. This is the problem with the blue team side. There's been so much time waiting for your people to be freed up because they're busy on implementations, and you can't really spend your money on hiring new people right away because then you blow your entire budget and they won't give you any more. All right. All these procedures are up. Um... All right, we're going to we're going to skip the ones that I've been going for as low hanging fruit like the strong Wi-Fi and stuff. We're going to defer those a little bit. Uh we are going to invest in uh two factor and we are going to invest in network level encryption. Okay. You want to invest in the segment uh oh well, my, i don't have enough people just yet okay that's fine uh let's put that person on asset inventory And now that I got my two people back, let's start going into the security awareness tree. Okay. Let's invest in those security training skills, I suppose. Stop those goddamn social engineering attacks. Am I right? The budget should increase. Okay. All right. All right. I really want to say that that work. Yep. Let's do uh, the seam and network segmentation. Okay. Let's get on those IR procedures, eh? That's what I'm thinking. And vulnerability mapping would be good. But let's get on those IR procedures. Loiter removed from the premises. Okay. Now we're now we're getting into it here. Now we're moving. Okay. You know, two people free. Then let's do vulnerability assessment. We're running real low. Real low on cash here. The sun's getting real low. Now your procedures are done. Okay. Let's get to... That's probably what I should have done the last blue team loss I had before the one you just saw uh, in part three is I probably should have had an ICS vendor certification uh, on me before I did the patching. Okay, anyway, uh, let's close this and see. Okay, so we probably should get started on log collection. And I don't want to spend all of my money here, but... Is there a better way or a better thing we could be doing? Ah, oh, strong Wi-Fi. 
That is a tempting mistress, so I will go with that. Strong Wi-Fi is up. I got my person back. Um, Harden RDP. You'll see out of service. Next level security. I said out of service. Vulnerability assessment. Okay, what do we got here? I got two of them I gotta do. Damn. Well, let's get them both, I guess. All right, that shouldn't be a problem. I mean, we need these. They're important. And one of those, or both of those, both of them failed. Are you kidding me? God damn it. One of them worked. Oh, I thought I had a person available. Apparently not. Okay. Seems good. All right, I got a $10,000 bonus for doing this without asking for money. Reboot the fucking thing! Jesus. Another one. Oh my God. I should have done USB security. Okay, it's fine. We'll get it next time. The blue team damaged their own process because they couldn't reboot the fucking systems. Um, security awareness training. my third person back before I can spec further into that, and I'll get them back next turn. Let's put them on something that will only take one turn to complete. Like USB security here, and endpoint detection. Oh, actually, endpoint detection might take... Okay, that is only a one turn. Okay. Alright, now that I got all my people back, we can go further into this. Wait the requisite three turns for that to complete. Okay. Now let's do... Um... Network segmentation and strong Wi-Fi. Okay, now that we got them back. Vulnerability mapping.
Okay. Okay. Let's do... Two factor and let's do maybe instead of video surveillance, I should do electronic locks. Yeah, let's try that. I I don't think I, I've specced in this for a while. I'm kinda curious to see. We'll do two factor and then we'll do physical two factor. We found a loiterer even without any physical security measures. Uh, okay. Let's do physical two-factor, because I have actually not taken that one yet. That's only one person, so we'll do that. Um, let's do... Let's close this. Let's start um, doing our... I probably shouldn't patch those unless I have the, the thing, should I? Uh, let's start doing system hardening. Okay. Let's do log collection here. Oh, I'm out of people. Uh, for USB... USB security. Okay. For some reason I can't do it, but that's fine. Okay. <clears throat> Alright, I've got all three of my people back, so let's see what we can <clears throat> really do here. Uh, let's get the... Yeah, for, for whatever reason, I can't hit those, um, but that's okay. Get one person on the IR, let's get another person on the VPN, and then let's get one person here to start doing log collection. Okay. And I got one person back. Oops, what did I just click? USB security? Okay, well, sure. That's fine. What is it? Engineering workstation. Okay. Remote access defense. All right. Uh, now let's do... I should really probably do some vulnerability assessment. Um... How about we instead do a strong password and RDP hardening? Okay. Two people back again. Uh, and this one is for, uh, yep, let's get this. Let's put our other person on uh, the, oh, no, we need two for that. So let's, let's see, we're going to need 8,000. And two people for ICS security monitoring. Um, so if I get this, I should still have enough afterwards. Let's deploy that baby inside the wire. Okay. 
Got my two people back, got my 8,000 bucks, so now we're going to do ICS security monitoring. Got 500 bucks left to my name. It's time to request more budget. Okay, now I got that certification. Um... All right, let's request that budget. Secure monitor is to do to do. Okay. What else do we need to move into here? I think it's time to do vulnerability assessment. Identify known vulnerabilities and assets, which usually includes active. Yep. So we can we can start patching those vulnerabilities, but let's get it. Oh, that's right. I need the money first. Shit. Um. Uh, then in that case, time would be best spent. That's my last money. Ah, shit. There we go, system hardening. Oh, budget will be done next time, okay. System patches. Budget acquired, $40,000. All right, and we got the people we need to do it to, so let's get that vulnerability assessment up, and let's get another person on um, placement of the IDS. is just so weird. Um, all right. Let's do system hardening here. We got some stuff we gotta do. Damn. Ah, shit, we have a uh, fucking ransomware outbreak over here. And I can't do anything about it? Okay. Ah, I got the USB secure. Ah, I don't have enough people. Fuck. Fire mode activated. Um, clean the asset. Can't do forensics. Oh, I don't have enough people to do anything else anyway. PLC out of service. Okay. Well, at least I've got... Oh, it's going to take another turn. A. Okay. At least I've got the certification for the patches. Well, hell, I mean... Let's put you on threat hunting, I guess. Asset cleaned. Okay. If it's cleaned, then why is it still... Alright. Two people in two turns to crack it for free. No, let's spend the money and replace it. Deactivate IR so that we can start patching that. It's costing us money anyway. Oh, it's not a patch, it's a reboot. Change default credentials. System patches. Okay. Now we're now we're talking. Patch. USB security. 
Update AV, and we're out of people. AV updated. Endpoint detection. USB security. Install AV on our IDS. Endpoint detection. Later removed. AV updated. Okay. It would be nice if there was more than one icon to indicate problems, but I can see how that would get messy pretty fast. Okay. Log collection. System hardening. System hardening. <clears throat> uh, let's get somebody back on that certification in case we need it. And safe testing methods as well. Oh, I don't have enough people. Thought I had everybody back. strong passwords and the safe testing methods. Okay. Uh, patches. Patches. Proper methodology. Thank you. I appreciate that. I appreciate a game that recognizes my brilliance. Yes, change the default creds. Install AV. Log collection and analysis. Uh, USB security, USB security. Patches. Endpoint detection. Update AV. Endpoint detection. A loiterer. Um, and I feel like we can install that video surveillance system now. And threat hunting. Let's get one person on endpoint detection there. Log collection on the access point. Compromised asset detected. Okay, where are you at? Ooh, this guy. Okay. System patches. Or we can go into IR. Let's go into IR. And we'll do system patches. Clean remote activated. This guy right here. Let's do the... Forensics, and we'll do the clean. Although disconnecting would probably be the better way to go. That's what I would do in real life here anyway, but I'm trying to fill this little green bar up, so. Um, we need one more turn for those two. How does installing video surveillance fail? It took my money and it didn't work. Are you fucking kidding me? Uh, oh, ho, 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 ho. Makes me angry. Go ahead and completed. Got the evidence. Asset cleaned. And we are back to where we once was before. Let's do some threat hunting with our people while we're here. 
Uh, and try something just to keep them busy for a turn while IR deactivates and we can fill that little green bar up a little bit more. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to need to request more budget soon. The system patches. System patches. System patches. I need to go back and check on these. All right. Well. What is this here? Are we just, are we to assume that we are doing in-house development? I suppose we are, so I'll grab that, I guess. We really, I don't think we should be, but okay. Uh, update firmware. We also need to get that certification back. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, let's go with that certification and end our turn. I just want I apparently it's really important to have that. Oh shit. Our fucking we're in the yellow here. I didn't even realize. I just saw it tick up a little bit, so I think whatever we did is working. Uh, okay. SDLC and you've implemented uh this includes this key coding pair, okay. And put one of the new controllers to TV. Okay. All right. System patches. System patches. System patches. Loiter removed from the building. Okay, things are looking pretty darn good here. Uh, we need to get some... We need to move farther into our environment. We're working from zone 5 backwards, and we are not getting very far. <laughs> Every time we do, something happens. Uh, let's do system hardening here in our gateway. Game's got me spun. All right. Log collection. Change default crits. Okay. Request more money. Uh, endpoint detection. The USB security. We are broke. Later removed again. They must be getting desperate. They're trying to find a way in physically. Uh, let's do some stuff that doesn't require money for a little while. System patches are up. Wow, things are really starting to look pretty darn good around here, if I do say so myself. Uh, system card. Starting to clean up this uh, one horse town. Okay, we got an, we got more money. Excellent, excellent. Things are going exactly according to plan. We should really start to back up processes. Um, we never even did vulnerability assessment. Um, let's get that goddamn video surveillance because we keep catching loiterers. And should I spend the time and money on a backup process, or should I just kind of keep doing what I'm doing here? I feel like let's let's stay the course here. Let's keep at least one person on the day to day. Oh, we got two of our people tied up with that other project. Yeah, slider's definitely moving in the right direction. I was pretty. I didn't realize I was getting close to a lose condition there. I didn't even realize it. Uh, but we're definitely moving back up into the green now. So. Uh, okay. Did that fucking fail again? No, oh, that, that's still ongoing. Okay. Alright. System hardening. Um, USB security. 
We're just now getting to USB security on our fucking workstations. And we're on turn 58 here. Is that done? Uh, one more turn. One more turn for that. Okay. Uh, let's do system hardening over... No, let's do endpoint detection. And then my guys will all be freed up all at the same time. All right, we got video surveillance. Fort Knox, electronic locks, physical 2FA, and video surveillance are installed. Your physical security went from picket fence to medieval fortress. You're darn tootin' it did. All right, let's get the backup processes done. And let's get to the rest of this. System patches. Install AV. Loiterer. Freeze, Jay Walker. System backups implemented. Now we can start doing backup. Before we do that, though, I do want to make sure that all of these are good. Dude, God, we got to finish log collection. I forgot we never did log collection on all those. That explains why our intel bar isn't going up very far. That's what we'll work on next, is getting all of our logging. Got to move that intel bar up. There, I did look in the manual, by the way, when I said that there are limited win conditions for the blue team. Shit, I was not kidding. Uh, in the... Oh, is the timer ticking down? Oh, it sure is. Okay. Um, in the manual here, it shows win conditions for each different team somewhere. I'm sure it's probably up here near the beginning. That makes sense, right? well whatever there's two ways to win as the blue team one of them is to fill the bar all the way and the other one is to just simply outlast your opponents and, and not get uh, obliterated here uh, reboot that you go ahead and get that certification and um, log collection over here Cleaning up this one horse town. Compromise asset detected. Oh no. I got the budget. Let's just replace it. Okay, now we can deactivate this and we can... Oh, wait. No, I got another one here. Oh, shit. Um... Oops. Shit. I can't go. The thing is covered. Oh, there's the close button. Um. Okay. I got flustered there for a second. Asset out of service. That's this guy here. Those are still working. Yes, they're working. Okay. I should have probably deactivated the IR since it takes a turn and everything will be done in the next turn, but... Okay. 
Ah, shit, we got another one. Damn, you guys are fucking desperate. Um, but I like how the bar is moving, so we're gonna do this. Let's disconnect our DC from the internet, uh, from the, uh, let's disconnect our DC from the network. We don't need it. It's optional. We're getting pretty close to the end of the game. I don't know which is going to happen first, but the Intel bar will fill up or we'll run out of turns, one or the other. Hopefully I don't fuck myself over before then. That would be ideal. Um, what's up with the clean asset failed? Okay, fine. No, just replace it. Just replace it. Threat hunting. Asset replaced. Okay. Uh, we seem to be clean, so let's deactivate that and put our people on some threat hunting in the meantime. Okay. Now, now do I have all the logs on? Looks like I got all the logs. System patches. Um, and then we can... Create a restore point. Create a restore point. Oh, I still had two people I could assign. How did that happen? Um, let's do an internal vulnerability assessment. Or should we do an internal pen test? Let's do an internal vulnerability assessment. And... Oh, I forgot all about that guy down here. Uh, USB security. Endpoint detection. Um, oh, the internal vulnerability is a three-turn maneuver. Okay, I didn't realize that. Okay. Restore point over here. Oh, the creating restore points... Oh, the creating restore points doesn't require a person? Oh, well then why the fuck wouldn't I just pile them on? I thought they required a person. I mean, it's my fault for not you know, actually paying attention, but... Okay. Because I'm pretty confident in our, in our clean bill of health at the moment. Oh, we're on turn 75. We're done. All right, we finally got our blue team win. This is the weathered the storm condition. The other one is... The other condition is a... Uh, page 13. Um, all clear. So successfully bring the network to a vulnerability-free state means clearing off all vulnerabilities, but looking zero days from all assets. Um, there is uh, the weathered the storm condition, and then there is the red team apprehended where you fill your threat uh, uh, intelligence bar all the way up to 100. So it says that there's three blue team wins. I don't know how to get the all clear because... Um, Oh, I have vulnerabilities everywhere. Oh, zero days. Um, I suppose a pen test is probably how you get to see what it, where the zero days are, and I didn't ever finish that. Or was it the internal audit? It was probably the internal audit that revealed that at the very end on the last turn. Yeah, that's probably it.
So uh, three win conditions for the blue. All clear is exceedingly difficult, I would imagine. It seems like you have to go really far into the, the tree in order to do it. Um, you'd have to really devote your resources to scrubbing everything. Uh, the uh, red team apprehended and the weathering the storm are the two most viable blue team strategies in the game. Um, weathered the storm obviously wouldn't even be an option in an unlimited horizon game. So if you have infinite turns, um, that wouldn't be an option. So you would only have the two possibilities, which is all clear and red team apprehended. Of course, without the limit in the number of turns you're taking, then the all clear win condition becomes viable. I just don't think it's possible with the resources you're given in 75 turns. But again, I'm hardly an expert at this game. I've been playing it for like three fucking hours. Um, meanwhile, the red team has the damage ICS, blue team damage their own process, and company profit production compromise which are all uh, extremely viable and even easy strategies for them. When I played the red team side, you can basically achieve these uh, <clears throat> by doing virtually anything. <laughs> and of course, one of them, the blue team damage their own process. It's a red team win. The red team need do nothing for the blue team just needs to kind of screw up in order to get it. So a lot like, uh, like the real world analog uh, that this game is, is emulating. Um, uh, yep. So let's see what we did. Uh, well, the red team was trying this time. Um, holy shit. Were they ever trying this time? Direct cyber attacks. 29. Two of them, or four of them landed. Two out of 27 were manipulation attacks and two out of two were denial attacks and both denial attacks succeeded. But of course I didn't even see anything related to that. Um, didn't seem to. Uh, come into that to, unless those are the compromised machines I found. Um, physical intrusion, uh, they didn't attempt. They tried spear phishing and USB drops. Their USB drops succeeded. It did take me a while to get USB security up, especially on those workstations. I just had too many other fires to put out. Uh, and I ended up basically kicking them all the way back out of the environment as they lost all of the pivots that they had. So. Um, resource utilization, 82%. Meanwhile, here on my end, I had, um, down and breach three, four, so seven, seven total issues. Okay. Um, <laughs> I resolved 114. How did I resolve eight out of seven? I'm not sure how that happened. Average detection time. So my, yeah, it was just, I was just busy fighting fires almost the entire game. Um, it wasn't really until the end that I was able to get, um, ahead of the eight ball on those. Um, discovery and remediation is low, but it did take me a while to get Intel going because I couldn't get logs, uh, uh, until later in the game. Spent $137,000, which is <laughs> perfectly reasonable if you ask me. And, uh, yeah, we were doing really well there at the end. We were really chugging, chugging along, chugging along. Let's see what they had. Um, well, they had some insight, not, not a ton, honestly. Um, well, I got nothing more to say on the matter. We finally got our W for the blue team. Uh, this is going to be my last part for threat gen red versus blue. Um, uh, but I will tell you, yeah, I did enjoy this game. I am going to recommend it. I'm going to put it on my list. Um, it was a, it was a good one. Not the red team side so much. Again, I have to say that I think there's some shortcomings here on the red team side. Uh, the red team side is just not that fun. It's really not that interesting. It's in terms of a hacking simulator, which this isn't billing itself as a hacking simulator, but let's be real. The red team side is a pen test. It's, it is a hacking simulator. Um, it doesn't use any of the, the mechanics that you're really looking for in a hacking simulator. Um, and it's, it's kind of easy mode, to be honest with you. The game is very easy on the red team side, but a person playing the red team acting as a real life antagonist to a real life blue team player that I think would be valuable. And that is what I'm thinking about maybe implementing in some fashion, or at least if I were to recommend it, that would be my recommendation. Um, on the blue team side, though, it more than makes up for the shortcomings on the red team side. It is a lot of fun to play just on your own. Uh, the default configuration of 50,003. Um, I mean, we got a W. It took me three tries, and it was an uphill battle both ways. So it was a tough challenge. But the fact that you can tweak those and play the kind of game you want to play 
is even better because that's going to add replayability for me and uh, you can add your own level of difficulty give yourself more resources or people make it a little bit easier take some of them away to make it a little bit harder although it's pretty hard right now as it is um, and go with that excellent excellent game this was a hidden gem um super happy to have discovered it let me see what it says here on uh on steam about it um only 44 reviews positive not overwhelmingly positive but positive let's see what the the negative reviews here say uh let's see matt m uh this is posted september 15th 2019 so only like a couple of weeks after this game was live um edited in 2020, the balance switched to red and the UI is slightly improved since I last played, but that sort of thing would only matter if this was a game worth playing to begin with. Now that they have split the game into tiers, it's easy to see that the professional versions are where the good training stuff lives, but it costs way more and requires 10 licenses minimum. Oh, I didn't even know that that was a thing that could be done. So I firmly reinstate that you should only purchase this stripped down version if you are in cybersecurity education but can't afford the real thing and want a sneak peek. Gamification is a noble endeavor, but I think it should actually be a good game before heaping praise on it. It's more gamish than game. Strategy gamers will quickly notice that when going that what's going on in the background doesn't leave much room for actual strategy. Release review. Okay, this is what he originally said. Before you purchase this, you should know that there isn't much more here than a proof of concept. It could be very cool in the future, but there isn't much depth to the game at the moment. After turn 25 of 100, there is very little tension or strategy. Blue finishes skill tree early and then patches and tests cyclically. Red, okay, well, I'm going to, I was going to wait till the end to, to comment, but uh, yeah. Blue finishes skill tree early and then patches and tests cyclically. That's cybersecurity, man. <laughs> you, you develop a strategy, you get your two, your five, your ten year strategies, you work towards implementation. As implementation occurs, you operationalize and you do the daily work um blue finish okay red hopes to get really really lucky and chain two or three attacks together before being kicked out by incident response if you want a training tool that can be used to explain cybersecurity concepts this is an interesting project to keep an eye on and purchase for that purpose that is clearly focused on explaining high level attack and defense and the network view is quite cool however it's not very fun after turn 25 and the game part of the game still needs a lot of work i recommend this as a training tool for cybersecurity education but not as a game uh, there's parts of this that are fair and there are parts of that uh, that aren't um i do see when they did their edit the balance switched to red yeah it's it favors red team for sure i did, i thought it was fun as a game but i mean there's some truth i guess in this um it, it, i don't know i thought it was fun uh, and i thought it was a strategy game there there definitely was some strategy involved there were times when i i had to make choices on what to defer and what to move forward with that said it was clear or it is clear from playing the game that there is one best path that the game kind of forces you into because otherwise the enemy ai will exploit those vulnerabilities like for example when i the first time i played when i tried to defer security awareness training in favor of more technical controls um, but that's not necessarily a bad thing because it is true to life. I mean, every time I lost the game, I was like, yeah, that makes sense. Every loss I had, it was, yeah, that makes sense. I made a mistake or I ignored something I shouldn't have ignored. So I can't really fault the game for that. It's doing its job in those cases. Um, <laughs> Renoko knocked over my <laughs> system to vulnerability assessments and lost the match due to not making enough money. Uh, truth truth but again it's not the game's fault that's how life is these days <laughs> um all right uh let's see what do we got here slow jams and jellies uh this project is uh product is hard to review ultimately i said no because it's on steam and most of the people here will naturally expect this to be a game uh see i don't feel like that's a valid critique yes steam is a gaming platform but it's not just that Steam should be a place where you can put all kinds of goddamn projects on here. There's porn on Steam, for God's sake. Are you really going to play an adult porn game and leave a review that's like, well, you know, I like the anime titties, but uh, it didn't have a lot of fun gameplay. Are you fucking kidding me? Come on. I, I came across a, a forensic challenge on Steam, and I was ecstatic because it was different. I want to see stuff like that on here. But maybe that's just me. Maybe I'm weird. Maybe maybe this should just be uh, a fucking uh, uh, VR and COD and uh, Ubisoft isn't even releasing all their shit on here anymore. God damn. I, uh... 
Anyway, ultimately, it doesn't really do that. If you don't already have a computer networking background, you probably struggle to make sense of what's even happening. Fair. Yes, that's fair. For example, I just assumed the game... Uh, shit, I'm getting a phone call. Hold on a sec. Hello, I'm back, and I'm here to talk to you about your car's extended warranty. Um, okay, yes, true. If you don't already have a background in this kind of stuff, you're probably going to be lost. Uh, you might not even know what to do. You'll have to do trial and error, and that's not going to be any fun. Uh, for example, I just assumed the game would come with a lengthy tutorial that adds devices one by one to a larger network. It doesn't. You start a game, there is, yeah, fair, also fair. That is what the game needs. It does need a tutorial level uh, where you start out on very, very small networks, maybe even your home network. A simulated home network, like you've got your router and you've got your one PC and a couple of mobile devices or something like that. Um, that would be a great tutorial level, great place to start to explain the concepts. Um, so yeah, uh, slow jams and jellies, fair, fair, fair assessment. I, I wouldn't say that's a bad thing. Uh, this clearly is geared towards people who have an interest in cybersecurity already. It even says that in the description. So, uh, Feed fee. Uh, you receive the product for free. I'm not going to read your review. Um, Gek. I uh, really like this game. Is realizing it? I don't know about that. Looking for if there's any valuable insight here. Really, there's only the two negative, and that's enough to get it knocked down from overwhelmingly positive to positive, huh? Um. Review type negative. There we go. We got four negative reviews. Um, Shy Pantalones. IDK, how this has positive reviews. It's not very good. Well, you're not very good. It's not constructive. I don't know what the fuck to do. I can't even read that and get anything out of it. Drago. I don't really want to give it a no, and neutral is sadly impossible to an educational tool, and I think gamification is a noble cause that should be further explored. However, I simply can't review it in any other way than as a game, given how hard it tries to be one. Without the game portion, it could be a stylized PDF, and if I wanted to embrace further its tool part, it could have been designed very differently, like a wiki, which it already is, with gameplay elements to facilitate better understanding of concepts. But we have what we have, and to be honest, if you, and potentially, if, and potentially your friend who play verse with, are not cybersecurity crazed, or you're not a worker in this field, you're already, you're, feel already, you're not going to, writing style is tough. Uh, you just blatantly, okay, okay, so yeah, fair enough. Uh, that makes sense. There's an amazing wiki, and the game, I really don't know where to begin with the latter, because it's presenting real life concepts. Um, that, I, I'm not reading all this shit, uh, but uh, that seemed mostly fair. Right? Nothing I haven't already said. The only difference between... Uh, so there's four negative reviews. Two of them I largely agree with, but the difference is, is while I largely agree with them, I would still rate it as positive because I had a positive experience. This was fun for me, and I don't feel like the game should be judged on whether or not any random person can pick up the game and be like, oh, this is fun. I want to be a cybersecurity professional now. It specifically says it's geared towards people with an interest in cybersecurity, as in an existing interest in cybersecurity. Um, as an educational tool, this isn't something I would put in front of freshmen, to be honest with you. This is something I might do at maybe the end of a freshman class as like a fun project, um, but it's definitely not something I would do um, to like intro to information assurance students. Um, unless it's again at the end of the semester as like a fun project, but I might even, I might actually use this as a security tool, um, for like a 200 level class in, um, yeah, shit, this might be good in something like a, like a risk management class, um, or an operations class or something. Not that I'm going to definitely do that, but that's where I would consider using a, this, this particular game or a game like this. Um, so that's it. That's all I got to say on the matter. I recommend. I like I like it. This is a good game. Uh, and if you disagree with me, if you're one of those four people on Steam uh who who would have disagreed with this, um then fuck you. As I'm right and um and you're wrong. So 
Uh, take care. I got some more in the pipeline. Uh, I don't know how many more I'm going to get to. I'm getting, I'm, I'm feeling the crunch for fall. It's right around the corner. So I might get another game or two in before the semester starts up. And uh, if you join me there, then I will see you when that happens. Take care.